I'm Dennis Delling, uh, Flint, Michigan. I'm here because I'm I've I've got 34 years in and I've seen nothing but giveaways, giveaways, and that's my whole 30 years. Nothing but concessions. They're hitting retirees. They're hitting the new hires. They're hitting from top to bottom. And uh, it's just uh, I've had enough of it. I. I've always wanted to see a strong union, but or leave a strong union for the next generation. But it, it's, that's what I'm here for—to make sure to do what I can to make sure that the union stays strong, stand up with the with the young people, the new new people coming in, you know. So they have a union. We're going back to pre-union days, you know, before the sit-down strike. You, know, you figure the wages and stuff that they're getting now, no benefits. All the foundations gone out of the union. The job security's gone. Uh, equal pay for equal work's gone. Like them, them are all the, they're supposed to be the bedrock of the union. Benefits, pensions, it's all gone. So, uh, you know, what is their purpose? What's the union's purpose? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm from local uh, 1700, uh, Detroit Diamond Chrysler. And uh, I'm here to support your uh, Orient workers and uh, the Indianapolis workers. And uh, we're here to send a powerful message to the UAW, and not just UAW, to management too, around the country, that we're not going to tolerate them trying to manipulate our contracts. Right. And, uh, we we want to see what's in them contracts, and we want to have our voice heard. For so sure. that's what I'm here to support, the Morian workers, and uh, support uh, Greg uh, Powers. Frank, uh, I missed when uh, Owen Ham was here. What do you think that uh, his speech uh, uh, well, meant uh, to the people uh, who are here? Let me tell you uh, uh, my thoughts about that. Uh, I'm Frank Hammer. I'm a retired local 909 uh, UAW member and past officer. Um, the uh, What I spoke about today was about the uh, 33 miners in Chile. And what it reminded me of was the, uh, the Flint sit-downers because they went in and occupied a fa factory for 44 days and you want to talk about living solidarity that was living solidarity those people faced the heat cut off from the plants even in the dead of winter uh, they had no electricity and they held out for the cause of the union and they survived why because they got themselves organized they reminded me of the miners because the miners they, they, they did a division of labor they organized committees they maintained themselves they rationed what they had so that they could stay solid and united. And today they're a shining example of what working class people are like. And we're not about, you know, I want more than this guy's got. We want all the same and we want to have a good life. And that's what they were about. And I think that's what the people at Lake Orion are saying. For that sure. we don't want to be wealthy rich and filthy rich and all that. We want to have a good life. And uh, there's General Motors is taking it away from us because they want to have more. And uh, people are here at Solidarity House because they're concerned that the UAW is on the right, wrong side of this coin, that they should get on the right side. They should remember Flint. Uh, Martha Gravatt, and I uh, work at Warren Stamping Plant of Chrysler, local 869. I am here in Detroit because after almost 23 years, Chrysler closed my plant in Ohio. And they told me if I did not accept a job in Detroit, they were going to eliminate my sub pay and my health benefits within seven days and cut my recall rights down to 18 months. So that's why I'm living here in Detroit. But why I'm at this demonstration is because it is time for working people to take a stand. GM has declared war against the workers. They have told them in Indianapolis, in Saginaw, Grand Rapids, now here, and who knows where else, either you take a pay cut or you lose your job. I'm here to say they have no right to impose those ultimatums, that we have a contract, our wages and benefits, and our right to a job are in that contract. Every worker has a basic right to a job. So they have no right to threaten us with the loss of our jobs in order to get us to work for wages that are only one and a quarter times the poverty rate for a family of four. That's criminal. And working class people need to come together and stand up to the corporations and the banks 
and their backers uh, who hold elected office. If uh, Mr. King was here today, what, what would you tell him? I would tell him, Brother King, it's wonderful to see you out there advocating for a moratorium on foreclosures. It's wonderful to see you advocating that we close the School of Americas. I'm very excited to see all of that. But at the same time, you are saying that the corporations have to be profitable, that they have some inherent right to make a profit. And I'm here to say no, no, there is no right to make a profit. We have a right to stay in our homes, to not have to choose between rent and food. And you need to be part of that fight and not side with the company. You need to be here with the workers and take on General Motors and take on these banks, not just when their home is people's home are losing their homes, but when people are losing their jobs and their wages and their benefits. Get get with us, get in this fight. I'm Greg Shotwell, GM, UAW retiree. Co-founder of Soldiers of Solidarity. I read a newsletter called Live Bait and Ammo, which is uh, popular with the rank and file. Why am I here? Uh, I'm protesting the, uh, the international union depriving union members of the right to vote on a contract that cuts their wages in half. I'm protesting against dividing up the union into multiple tiers. I'm protesting that they're setting up a new precedent here in, in Lake Orion whereby they can go plant by plant uh, breaking the national agreement. They literally are breaking the national agreement in this contract and uh, they're setting up a precedent to go forward and do that everywhere else. Who knows who's going to be next? They're going to go plant by plant. And this is where they're going to, uh, another method they found to divide the union, not only with the multiple tiers, but plant against plant. They've really elevated uh, the level of whipsaw. You know, and in this case, uh, they're going to have, you know, anytime they have a plant that might need a new work, they're going to say, well, if you want new work, they're going to bribe them and extort from them a competitive operating agreement, which will be for their wage cuts. Now, they're not asking for those wage cuts from the executives. They want parity with the non-union plants, with the hourly workers, the union workers. They do not want parity for the executives. I wrote about this uh, recently. I think the study was uh, uh, 2006 study, 2007, that uh, Toyota exec the CEOs made uh, 12 times as much, or it was 11 times as much as the average worker. In Germany, it was 12 times as much. In the United States, it was 475 times as much. Yeah. And the United States executives are failures. I mean, you've said that this is illegal, what, they, what they're doing, but you've also sort of said that there's no legal recourse for the rank and file or, or not in a, in, a, in a timeline that meets up with the shit that's rolling at them. Exactly. You know, this, this contract they propose violates the UAW Constitution. Article 19, Section 4 says they have the right to vote. And in fact, that article also says that they have to give permission for negotiation and have to be involved in negotiation. So they violated the Constitution. They cannot negotiate a contract with an employer that supersedes the Constitution. When they do that, they have violated the National Labor Relations Act. The National Labor Relations Act forbids them for being a company-dominated union. Now, when they're negotiating on behalf of the company over the best interests of the workers, which are protected by the Constitution, which they've done here, then they're a company-dominated union. A company union. They're owned and controlled by the company. Now, if they try to appeal internally through the UAW Constitution process, it, it, well, I did it, right. and it took two years. Well, two years from now, these people will be scattered all over the country. You know, and the same with the National Labor Relations Board. They may luck out and get a more accelerated process, 
but it's a very long process because GM and the UAW have a team of lawyers on retainer who have nothing better to do than delay the process over and over again. They know that they, justice delayed is justice denied. I, I've always said that workers' rights are not defined by law or contract, they're defined by struggle. You get what you're willing to fight for. And this is why we came down here to protest today at UAW headquarters because they're supposed to be re representing us and they are teaming up with management to defeat us, to cut our wages. So what we need to do is to protest this in as many venues as we can. Uh, we should be going, you know, as the UAW in this election year is having fundraisers, for example, for these Democratic candidates, we should be picketing and, and explaining to the public what they're doing. When they open this plant, it should open, and it doesn't open really for production until next year in August. August, yeah. Just prior to the big negotiations, they'll be going on right then. We should have an information picket at that plant saying that this is a violation of the Constitution, it's a violation of law, and that it sets a precedent for all other UAW plants that we have to stop this here. We have to have the right to vote. Whatever contract they come up with, the rank and file should have the final decision about whether or not they are going to accept it. In bankruptcy court, the bankruptcy court, we had power in bankruptcy. And the UAW got a better deal than some of the uh, uh, other... Uh, Delphi salary. Yes, other, other employees. Because we have a contract and we have the right to strike. Even in bankruptcy. That's what helped us as opposed to the salary workers. Salary workers didn't have a contract. They didn't have any right to strike. They had no rights at all. They got whatever the company was willing to give them. They, we had those rights. The UAW took away the right to strike and the right to vote. That's a company union. That's illegal.